Almost no work environment is immune to colleague disagreements. But when there are a bunch of Hollywood personalities crammed into a small space for months on end, the friction can be even more intense. Here are some actors who were pretty much just repulsed by their co-stars. Glee Diva Life wasn't always a song on the set of Fox's hit musical comedy series Glee, at least when it came to co-stars Naya Rivera and Leah Michelle. Rivera revealed in her tell-all book that her rumored feud with the series' lead actress was true, albeit a little exaggerated by the press. She wrote about their tiffs. If I'd complained about anyone or anything, she'd assumed I was b**ing about her. Soon she started to ignore me and eventually it got to the point where she didn't say a word to me for all of season 6. Leah and I definitely weren't the best of friends and I doubt we'll ever sit on her couch and eat kale together again. She also hinted that art imitated life when it came to Michelle's on-screen stickler personality Rachel Berry, writing, I think Rachel, erm, um, I mean Leah, didn't like sharing the spotlight. Rivera has said that the tension is ancient history now, though. Absolutely. No, I think that she's lovely. I think that she's very talented, and uh, I would work with her again. Missing Magic Mike Most of the hip thrusters from Magic Mike graced the stage again in its sequel, Magic Mike Double XL, but one of the first film's actors, Alex Pettifer, was noticeably absent. Why? Well, he ticked off the wrong guy. Channing Tatum, whose stripping history the movies hilariously detailed, openly hated Pettifer after working with him and didn't invite him back for the second round. As hard as it might be to imagine Tatum hating anybody, he and Pettifer apparently butted heads after Pettifer failed to pay the bills on the apartment he rented from Tatum's friend. And his standoffish demeanor during the shoot didn't help matters either. As Pettifer himself admitted, I sat in the corner and listened to music because I'd been told that anything I do was wrong by my reps and that I was very insecure as a human being. That also gave me a bad rep because they said, oh, Alex thinks he's f***ing better than everybody else because he doesn't speak to anyone. Pettifer said he was just nervous the whole time, but the damage was already done. Dirty Dancing Diss Patrick Swayze might have had hungry eyes for his Dirty Dancing co-star Jennifer Grey on screen, but in real life, their relationship was a little less groovy. In his autobiography, Swayze revealed that Grey was too much of a real-life baby for his liking. He wrote, We did have a few moments of friction when we were tired or after a long day of shooting. She seemed particularly emotional, sometimes bursting into tears if someone criticized her. Other times, she slipped into silly moods, forcing us to do scenes over and over again when she'd start laughing. Swayze added that he got especially annoyed by those little outbursts because he was so busy working on other exhausting aspects of the film, like his character's dance scenes. And besides, he was the one doing all the heavy lifting. Swayze wrote about the film's iconic lake scene. It was horrifyingly, hypothermically cold in that lake, and we filmed that scene over and over. And despite the fact that Jennifer was very light, when you're lifting someone in water, even the skinniest little girl can feel like 500 pounds. Not the One Tree Hill Co-stars dating and breaking up while working together can be tricky enough, but when they go so far as to get married and then divorced and then still have to work together on screen, that's an extra level of awkwardness. That's exactly what happened to Sophia Bush and Chad Michael Murray on the set of their WB teen drama One Tree Hill. At the end of the day, we were two stupid kids who had no business being in a relationship in the first place. The two managed to keep it mostly civil on set, despite rumors of him stepping out on her with another woman, but Bush still doesn't like to talk about him. My mother once said to me that if you don't have anything nice to say, not to say anything at all. Fighting on Fury Road Charlize Theron and Tom Hardy had a really rough relationship on the set of Mad Max Fury Road, but the pair ultimately came out of the movie with a mutual sense of respect for one another. The Oscar-winning actress revealed to Esquire that the pair went at it on the set because of the isolation and brutal set conditions that they were working with and that they drove each other, well, mad. After the film was finally finished, though, Hardy left her a goodbye note that seemed a little sentimental about the tough times they shared together, writing, You are an absolute nightmare, but you are also f***ing awesome. I'll kind of miss you. Love, Tommy. Hey, at least their tiff didn't escalate to violence the way it did when Shia LaBeouf knocked Hardy out on the set of Lawless. True story. Terms of Endearment and Scorn much like the mother-daughter characters they played on screen, Shirley MacLaine and Deborah Winger reportedly had a very tough time getting along on the set of the Oscar-winning movie Terms of Endearment. Rumors of fighting, both verbally and physically, plagued production. Things eventually got so bad on set that co-star and noted wild man Jack Nicholson, of all people, had to step in and keep the peace. I'm starting to feel an obligation here, and it makes me 
makes it rough. McLean and Winger's feud continued after the movie was released thanks to a neck-and-neck -neck Oscar race, and when McLean ultimately won, she gave her a backhanded compliment during the acceptance, saying, I wanted to work with the turbulent brilliance of Deborah Winger. But McLean wouldn't be the only co-star to come up against Winger's turbulent brilliance, whatever that is. Not so gentle. An Officer and a Gentleman still ranks highly on most lists of top romantic dramas of all time, but for Deborah Winger, the experience of making that movie was not pleasant. She and Richard Gere, who played the romantic leads, did not get along. In fact, she once likened him to a brick wall. She and Gere have since put away their differences and are able to make light of all the discontent from so many decades before. She told The Guardian, I run into Richard Gere quite a lot, and he half jokes, are you still saying terrible things about me? We had a moment in our life which was not good, but everyone has to get it into perspective. Indeed, the pair publicly reunited in 2012 when she presented him a Lifetime Achievement Award at the Rome International Film Festival, and while it wasn't the same warm embrace we saw on screen, it was cozy enough for these two. Thanks for watching! Click the Nikki Swift icon to subscribe to our YouTube channel. Plus, check out all this cool stuff we know you'll love too!